I am back today with the Sig Sauer Echo 3, and I was really excited to get this out to the channel. I want to give a huge shout out to Optics Planet for sending this guy out for us to try. It's a very unique and interesting design, and Optics Planet has a few different versions, but this is the 1X Reflex version. Now, the price generally sells for $3,200, and if you're familiar with this type of technology, you know that the price can be very high on something like this. They are on sale right now for $2,200, and I've got the code 704TAC or 704TAC for 5% off your Optics Planet order. I do want to give another big shout out to them because there's no way I would have acquired this on my own without their help because it's just too much money for an unknown to try and I'm not really that into hunting. So something like this I feel like would be a great option for a hunting platform and we'll talk a little bit about more of the options of why you would want something like this. So it's nice that they sent this out to the channel for us to try. Now, because it is so much money, I'm going to be very critical of this site. I've reviewed other thermals in the past, and every time I've reviewed them, they've always been handheld monoculars, and the sensor is pretty decent, but they've all come in right at about the seven to $800 price point. So this is more than double, but it gives you the option with an actual reticle itself in the image, you can sight everything in. You can also record everything you're doing. And again, that lends a pretty awesome option for hunting applications. It has the battery compartments up front. It's got an adjustable focus up front with a throw lever. It's a polymer housing, which I feel like is going to be okay. But when you're talking about a $2,000 or $3,000 MSRP product, when you pull it out, that almost feels a little bit cheap. And you can see the mold lines in here. Uh, that's kind of frustrating in my opinion. I normally don't knock products for that, but when you're talking about a $3,000 product, you can clean up your mold lines. This does, though, have a very nice QD mounting system that works out incredibly well, and that's where the price differences start jumping between something like this and something like a handheld device. One, you do have the ability to cite everything and select reticle options and record, as well as pull that data off to your computer. But the other thing is a very nice mounting hardware, and then it is recoil rated. So a lot of those other thermals may not be necessarily, oh, just slap it on a mount and throw a digital reticle in there with a little software changes for sight in. The actual boards themselves might not be recoil rated, and that's where the, a lot of the times what you're paying for in a device like this. So you can see that the reticle is actually at the lower part of the screen. Now, if you've ever shot digital night vision or something like that, you'll know when you go to sight it in, the screen kind of auto adjusts back to put the reticle back into the center. But with this thermal, you only get so much sensor space, and this is all the thermal you get, so there's no real way to adjust it without some type of software upgrade to then zoom everything in, crop out the sides, lose part of your thermal, then you lose the 1x capability. So it is what it is, and it just looks awkward once you sight everything in. Now, that being said, it's not that big of a deal, but it does throw you for a little bit of a loop. When this first happens, I thought something was wrong or it would recenter it in, and then I did a little bit more digging, and that's just the way it is. It does give you your battery indicator there and a nice control menu when you're pressing this down. So you can long press and you can change through the pallets. Uh, so you select that and then you can select down through the pallets. So it gives you a, a lot of nice options, white hot, um, red hot, red scale. Uh, it's, it's interesting. So this is not the best sensor I've ever used. Uh, but again, you're paying for the ability to mount this up to something rather than just the sensor technology itself. So what we can do is hold that down and go through. So there's the capture. You can set it to photo or video. And from there, you can actually go under recoil. So it takes it under recoil, which is pretty cool. You can also set the video time. But once you click it, it's just going to start recording. You don't like click it and click it off. And that's incredibly frustrating. So if you want 30 seconds, you click the record button. You just actually click over to the side, and now we're recording. You can't stop it. You can't click over. It's just going to record for 30 seconds, which is a little bit frustrating, but something to consider. 
So you can long press it and I don't even think it gets out of that. It won't. So we've got to wait for 30 seconds as it counts down and finishes that recording. Uh, not that big of a deal, but you guys can see you can do all those settings. On the back here, you do have this uh, port that you can access, that USB port, so you can pull off your data if you wanted to save a hunt or something like that. I'm going to show you guys the rest of the menu. Um, so we can go through, you can actually preview everything. You can select your reticle system between a ton of different reticles, which is very nice. Um, what, through there, you can go down and you can look at your display. You can actually zero your optic in. So at this point, what you'll do is it's already zeroed in, but you'll keep that center on where you were aiming. And then you'll move this up, down. You can see it moving left and right. And that uh, actually moves it to your point of impact. And we'll be taking a look at some of the images in a second. And you can see when I first took a shot, it was down and to the left pretty dramatically on a 22. Shifted everything over, and this is sighted in for my 1522 uh, MMP AR. It also has the ability to uh, kind of zoom in and the bullet drop compensation, and then motion activated, and then it also has the level plex. So the level plex is what you see right here. So if you tilt it one way, it tells you if you're level or not level, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's got a lot of stuff built in. I mean, it's got a lot of interesting things uh, that are built into this system that I like. But then again, I've got a lot of things that I don't like, but that it is just kind of the nature of the beast. Now, when we're talking about image quality, I do want to show you guys the image quality itself because it's not the greatest I've ever seen out of the thermal, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. So something like this is going to be um, kind of in between when it comes to sensor quality but you're getting all of that mounting capability. SIG has been a good brand. It gives you a lot of information. It gives you a lot of detail in the reticle selection, and it gives you overall a very good quality. I haven't had any issues out of this site when it comes to recoil or use down at the range. I just feel like if you're looking through a field, it really picks up a lot of your animals and things that you're going to be hunting very well. And then as you see in a minute, I'm a down at the range shooting steel. It's fairly easy to sight in on paper. And overall, it's pretty good. I'm just kind of in this weird position about this sight. Is it worth $2,000 to like 90% of people? The answer is no. But to 10% of people who want a small, compact, reflexed style thermal, this is going to be a very good option because it is ultra compact. One thing to note about this, they call it like a reflex sight, right? Like in my mind, I thought I could put it up and the refresh rate would be really good and I could go from room to room and navigate and understand what I'm seeing. That is just not going to be the case. The refresh rate is 30 hertz. It's blurry when you're shifting left and right. Uh, you can't actually use this inside a room and expect to navigate or understand anything what's going on. Um, you really have to be about 15 to 20 yards away before the heat signature starts evening out enough. And then really it's going to be good for just kind of propped up in a field, taking shots and hunting and things like that. So in my opinion, there's a lot better thermals on the market. But again, we're talking about insanely high prices. And this is kind of like that good entry level reflex style option. But let's click over to those images and kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. Then we'll summarize after that. So the first thing you're looking at is actually taking shots at a steel target. And this is the very first shots I took. So you can see very low and to the left. You can see the heat signature of the round very nicely. So super easy to sight in. At this point, I'm just kind of scanning the range. And definitely, this is the optimal distance to be using this at. Any closer, it starts to wash out. You can easily make out the car. I'm looking at my truck now, which has just has run recently. And it's at about 30 to 35 yards. So you can see kind of the heat differentiation between the exhaust system and the overall truck. We're looking at a truck that's been sitting there cold as well as a car, and you can definitely make it out at about 35 yards. Here's a target at about 30 yards, and we'll be taking some shots. You can actually see the heat difference between the white part of the target as well as the dark part of the target. And you can barely see those rounds kind of impacting the paper and changing the color differentiation. So that's a pretty slick option. So again, this is kind of the optimal distance. We're looking at now a spray paint can on a cone. I take the shot and you can see it blasting cold spray paint everywhere. So that is a pretty slick option right there. 
At this point, we're kind of transitioning over, and what we're gonna be looking at is a lot of different options when it comes to heat signatures with water, and you can actually see it leaking out as we're shooting a bottle full of water. It's just kind of flopping around, which is pretty cool, and you can definitely tell the heat signature. So in summary, if you were thinking you could grab this for like inside your house at five to 10 yards and make out anything, you're going to be disappointed. If you thought you could use this kind of inside your home as a reflex style thermal, that's not going to be the case. And I don't think it was designed for that. But every time I think of reflex, I think of like a hollow sun reflex or an EOTech or something like that with the same type of capabilities. And I wanted to just talk about that almost instantly right off the bat and show you guys what I'm talking about. But as you can see down at the Range, it really picks up a lot of different heat signatures that aren't necessarily quite different. Everything out on that range was just sitting at ambient temperature, but everything has different heat signatures like the bottle of water or the steel or even the two different colors on paper. So it works absolutely great and I truly think that optimal distance is going to be about 25 yards to 75 yards, which would be perfect for varmint hunting or deer hunting, coyote hunting, hog hunting, up close and personal, I think this is a great option. The other cool thing is you don't need IR to use this since this is a thermal, so you don't need to worry about IR signatures and things like that, so it's very stealthy, although it does give some ambient light back onto your face, but you could shield that up with a cover and really protect that light signature so it works out very nicely. In summary, I like this optic. I hope this gives you an overview. It's not something that I personally need or would use on a regular basis, but I do like to try these things and keep them with the channel for long-term testing evaluation in case you guys need something like this so i wanted to give you a little bit of those range images if i ever decide to take this hunting i also record some hunts with that and i'll show you guys some of the results as well thanks for watching have a good one